yes, 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 I know, I got it, I got it, I'll stay in the point, I'll stay in the... Oops, <laughs> we lost. <laughs> hey, Adelons, Frank here, and welcome to Solaris Saturday, your weekly one-stop shop for any and everything related to Solaris Software Combat. Now, first up, big thank you to everybody that played or grabbed the game this past week. You are amazing. We hope you enjoyed what we brought to the table, and we hope you're excited about what's to come. Now I know you've been patiently awaiting our next major update, and I have a little bit of news in regards to that. Now we are working on a roadmap. This will give you a much better idea of what and when it will be coming to Solaris Off-World Combat. Now we have been reading all your feedback, and we know you like these Q&As, so we're back again with 10 more top community questions about Solaris Off-World Combat. First question, is any chance of adding a new player or ranked matchmaking system? Now, that's a great question. The short answer is yes. The long answer is that our matchmaking system will grow as the game and audience evolves. Next up, you said, are there any plans to allow us to drop or ditch a weapon when we know it's getting low to strategically avoid leaving ourselves vulnerable? Now, right now, there are no plans for this. So your best bet, if you want to lose a weapon, is just firing into a wall until all your ammo is depleted. Personally, I'd rather use it up on arrival. Next up, you asked, do the weapons respawn on a timer? Now, yes, the weapons do respawn on a timer, and although it varies depending on the map, it's typically around 30 seconds. Next, you asked, will there ever be a server browser? Now, there are no plans to add server browsing. Next, you said, will I be able to run maps offline to study them? Now, I've actually been seeing this one a lot, just written a little differently. To answer you, yes, you will be able to do this once private matches come online. Next, you asked, will you add anything for players to do while waiting for a round to start? Now, we see this one again all the time, and we don't have any plans for that at the moment, but while we're talking about it, what would you like to do? Please let us know in the comments section. Next up, you said most rounds never seem to end with 4v4. Will players ever be able to join mid-match? Now, that's a great question. Right now, we are implementing features to keep all players in the game until the end of match. The key is to incentivize players not to leave. Mid-match join is also in discussion, and we have some great ideas for that one already. Next, you asked, are you adding a symbol to show who's talking? Now, we will definitely be adding a symbol that lets you know who's talking. Next, you said, will you be adding official support for 90 hertz mode? Yes, we will be looking into adding support for 90 hertz when it becomes officially available to developers. And finally, you asked, will you be adding more equipment in-game like the proximity mine? Absolutely, there are a lot of traps, weapons, and more coming to Solaris Off-World Combat in the near future. Now, hopefully we got the question, but if not, or you need a little more information, make sure to ask us this week, and we'll do our best to get to it on next week's show. Now, whether you realize it or not, audio can make or break a game. Funny thing is, when it's done right, you hardly even notice it. Today, I brought on our one and only sound designer, Dylan, to talk a little bit about his craft and himself. All right, so my guest today just hit 14 million streams on his song John Wick Mode on Spotify on the channel La Castlevania, but I personally know him as Dylan, our sound designer. Dylan, how are you doing today? Thank you for coming out. Doing great, man. Thanks for having me, Frank. <laughs> hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Now, one really cool thing about Dylan is Dylan, like me, never worked in video games before. He worked in sound and audio before, but never worked in games. This is his first job. Dylan, what was it like being thrown into a video game and having to figure out how to do game design and game sound for the first time? Well, uh, you know, my personality, I'm like, I really enjoy like taking on new challenges and like figuring out how to do like new things with audio and music. So it's been super fun for me. And uh, just the whole process has been really enjoyable. Uh, there's definitely like kind of overwhelming at first, like, oh man, I have to like learn how to use Unreal and Wise and, and how to integrate, you know, like I, I have a lot of knowledge in writing music and composing. I, I composed for films like John Wick before, and then I had composed music for games before, but that was just like a, a game company reached out to me and was like, you know, could you write some music for it? I didn't do any of the implementation. I hadn't done like sound design for games. Uh, but everybody at the, on the team at First Contact was, you know, really helpful and super cool about helping me kind of learn the ropes with Unreal, 
Did you ever realize how much depth there was in the sound design of games? Like, did you did you think that you'd have this much work to do? Yeah, for sure. I, I knew it was going to be a lot of work, but uh, I don't mind work, you know? Like, if it's something that I enjoy, like, I enjoy that process of, like, creating something and then sharing it with the world, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, like, my career previously, I was, you know, a musician, DJ. I toured all over the world uh, doing electronic music. And, you know, that was fun. I had a great time with that. But I kind of reached a point where I want to, like, work on projects that are bigger than things that I could just do on my own. Like the John Wick films, that, that whole experience of working with a team of people and creating something and then, like, releasing it out into the world and then, like, seeing it enjoyed by so many people, that's really thrilling to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's been a very similar experience with Firewall and now Solaris and just, like, seeing those things that you helped create like grow into this thing that's like loved by so many people all over the world it's it's worth the work you know yeah no no it's amazing and that was what i was going to get right into next with solaris and your audio and just kind of do you feel like you've gotten your vibe as an artist in these games as well do you feel like like when you listen to it because we've gotten a lot of love from solaris and firewall and all the audio and all the music so we already know people are like it you knew people like your music but do you feel like it's a good representation of you yeah i do i feel like uh i think people can start to hear like my character to the especially in the music um and uh, solaris has been super fun because i'm just a huge fan of sci-fi and those kind of like sounds, the like synthetic side of the sounds uh, that, that I was able to use like in the soundtrack for this game. Do you get to um, just run with it or do they give you kind of an idea? Is it, or is this, you know what I mean? Is it your playground? Hess, uh, because you know, he usually has like an overall vision for the game and then Shabs of course, uh, just cause he's the director. So I like, I like to, to, get inspired by hearing their ideas of course i have my own ideas and direction in mind but uh i think that kind of input is uh super useful especially from those two guys because they always just have like a vision um luckily we've always been on the same page as far as music i think we have similar tastes as far as like what's like badass to mm -hmm. see like in a game or here in a game i think so no, it's, no, it's a, that's good. It's a good, it's like a good relationship that you don't feel kind of hampered or tied into a corner. You probably get even better work done that way. And other than just the music, uh, th there's a lot more to your sound designing. And especially in VR, there's a lot more to the audio than just the sound. What else, like, 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 like what, what, what kind of sounds do you have to work on? I know you have to work on, but tell the people like the level of depth, like, like when you were working on like the creaking stairs and stuff, like, like yeah, let's talk a little yeah. about that. Um, well, yeah, basically every sound that you hear in our games is like created or manipulated or altered by me. Uh, so if you hear it in the game, I put it there, you know? Uh, but yeah, I mean, in VR especially, those little details really add to the immersion. So like you said, on certain levels in Firewall, we put little tiny tiny details of like just the creaks that happen on the stairs when you're walking you know those footsteps are a little bit different from like other surfaces with like even different types of wood and different types of uh you know materials that you walk on we put a lot of uh attention on those small details to really bring you into the game or like you know in firewall or solaris if you like bump into a wall with your gun you hear that you know, your gun connecting with the wall. Yeah, it and feels like you're really somewhere, which is cool. And that's that's all sound. Like, I wish we could play the clips without sound. You just, it, it makes a huge difference. Uh, it's yeah, cool. for sure. It's, it's a lot of fun for me also, like, seeing it come to life, like, as the game is developing and you get different bits of art coming in and then the sounds start getting placed in and, like, it just brings it to life. Um, yeah, it's a really... I, I love this job. It's super fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, now, last little thing I want to talk about, because I know you're really passionate about this, and I think this is really cool, but you don't just go online and say, like, hey, I want some blaster sounds, or hey, I want some, like, gun sounds. You you make these sounds from scratch. Can you talk a little bit about that process? 
Yeah, we do use some sound libraries, but never like using just like, oh, here's the sound, pop it in. Like mm -hmm. we'll take elements and like pieces of things. Like I'll go out and record things. I'll find sounds online. I'll synthesize things and then take those and manipulate them and make them our own sound. Uh, and that's really like the super fun part is like creating something that, especially with Solaris, because we're in this sci-fi world, mm -hmm. you know, in Firewall, we kind of have an idea of like what this type of gun is supposed to sound like, or, you know, it's a more real world thing. Mm -hmm. And then we just kind of amp it up to like gamify it and make it awesome. Oh yeah, turn to uh, 11, of course. Solaris, it's like, it could kind of sound like whatever you want it to. Oh, hell yeah. No, it's awesome. It's fun to watch you work. Cause, uh, well, before we were in the quarantine, I sat right next to Dylan. So I got to hear like blaster sounds and gunfire and stuff all day long. And it's really cool to hear the evolution of sounds. Um, it's not, he thinks it's annoying, but I think it's pretty cool. Um, and, uh, but outside of all of this and all of this work he does here and all these sounds he does, on top of that, you also are still making music. Like every, every other week, every other month, you're still putting new stuff out, right, Dylan? Yeah, I took a little break for a while and wasn't putting stuff out and cause, just because I was so focused on our games and just like I had been touring for so many years and like, I don't know, I just decided to take a break from putting out music for a little while, like mm -hmm. last year. But uh, I kind of just have always gotten messages from fans of our game and fans of my music and he was like, hey, when are you going to put out some new music? So I... Uh, decided to start putting some more stuff out and it's been crazy man like people are really responding to it you know like my plays on spotify are like higher than a lot of like big touring artists that you know no, I mean, it just shows you, you do good work, Dylan. So people respond well to it. And yeah, I just wanted to make sure people are aware he's, he's making some great stuff out there and you should definitely give it a lesson. If you like what you're hearing in the game, uh, there's a whole lot more um, out there for yeah, you. Yeah, I'm <laughs> hopeful we're gonna uh, release a Solaris soundtrack pretty soon. I just gotta like kind of put all the pieces together in like a, you know, they're formatted for the game right now in different pieces. That's something else we, we should actually mention uh i don't know like a lot of people ever pick up our on it or notice it but uh a lot of the music in solaris is like created in a way that like it never plays back exactly the same way there's like slight randomizations and it's just basically so you're not listening to a constant loop like you know break it out into little pieces and then i you know there's different algorithms and things that you can do to like kind of tell it how it should play but with some random variation of like in which order these parts happen and which layers are playing at which time and all kinds of stuff like that so i just have to take all those elements and lay it out into like a song format so that we could release it as a soundtrack so you know i've been super busy working on the game and new content that we want to share with everybody but in my like kind of spare moments that i get i'm trying to put together that soundtrack so hopefully we'll be able to share that with people no dude you're killing it yeah i mean honestly i it, it was hard and I say this every week, but I really do mean it. It was hard to pull him away to get some time to even sit down and chat, but he was super excited about this and I was too. And I, I love to introduce all these awesome people that I work with. And so now everyone watching at home gets to meet someone else that I work with. But yes, uh, Dylan, please, you're more than welcome to get back to work, dude. Thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, is there anything else you want to say to everybody at home uh, before we leave? No, just uh, if you haven't yet, make sure you check out Solaris. We put a lot of love into this game and we're working on adding a lot more to it, and I'm just excited for everybody to experience it and check it out. And if you get a chance, check out my Spotify. It's uh, just my artist name, Lake Castlevania, and uh, we'll yeah. link it below <laughs> for sure. But hell cool. yeah, no, dude, thank you. And uh, to everyone out there, we'll see you out on the hollow field. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Now, big thanks to Dylan for taking the time to sit down and chat with us. He is just one of the amazing and incredible people working here at First Contact Entertainment. Okay, now let's stop for a second to take a look at the fruits of those folks' labors by checking out this week's top five. Ooh.
ejections. Now, you may be saying to yourself, Frankie, top five, I thought it was top ten. No, top five is even more exclusive. Now, that's how we're going to do it from now on. And don't forget, if you would like to be included, make sure to upload your clip to YouTube or our Discord with the hashtag SolarisOWC and the top athlon each week will get a free key for the game. Now, let's check it out. Coming in at number five, we have Chettle. Now, Chettle is pushing through that teleporter to move for the point. Sees the enemies on there. He goes ahead and takes one out with his arc rifle. Takes another with his arc rifle. Dodges that Grauncher blast. Dodges that second one and takes out a third to hold the point. Great job, Chettle. Coming in at number four, we have Mike MK. Down Mike pushes up, gets one. Pushes for the point, gets two. Pushes through that, drops down below, grabs that auto rifle, gets a fourth. Great job, Mike. And coming in at number three, we got True Photog. Now True Photog sees yellow on the point, gets one with that rocket launcher, gets two with that rocket launcher, and gets three and four with that rocket launcher, and finishes by holding the point. Number two, we have Nimidas. Now Nimidas pushes through that teleporter, grabs himself a little armor, runs into a shootout, gets one, grabs that arc rifle, turns the corner, another shootout, gets two, turns back, head towards the point, which he sees the enemy on now, grabs that shield, deploys that shield real quick, peeks from around the corner in the shield, gets a third ejection, feels that fire, gets a fourth ejection, and slides, gets a fifth ejection right there. Great job. Nimi Das. And finally, number one, FX. Now, this actually was a 29 ejection streak. We're just showing a little portion of it. Now he goes, gets one right there, keeps on pushing, keeps on moving with that arc rifle, aims long distance, gets a second one right there, long distance, gets a third right there, keeps moving, holds that point, gets a fourth from inside the point, and finally a fifth with his pistol. Great job, FX, to come in at number one. Another week and another amazing set of clips. There is no denying the talent in this fantastic community. Now, make sure you get us your best clips through the week, and we'll see you next Saturday for another round. Now, before you go, if you want to stay in the know on everything Solaris Off-World Combat, make sure you subscribe to this channel here. If you want to go a little deeper, you can join our Discord or Facebook communities, and if you just want some updates, you can follow us on Twitter. Now, once again, a big thank you to all our players. You are what make this game amazing, and I look forward to seeing you on the Hollow Field.